the work done by a non-conservative force on a system is equal to the change in mechanical energy of the system, where we remember that the mechanical energy of an object is the sum of that object's kinetic energy, the energy of motion, and that object's potential energy, the energy as a result of its position above the Earth's surface. So what this tells us is that when a non-conservative force does work on a system, it actually changes the energy of the system. If it does positive work on that system, it will increase the amount of energy in the system, and if it does negative work, it decreases the amount of energy in a system. We can demonstrate this with a common example that we would have done in grade 11 of an object rolling down a slope. So here we have a two kilogram ball that is held or released from rest at the top of a three meter high incline that is 10 meters long. And we are told that there is a frictional force of five newtons acting on this object. Now traditionally we would have resolved this gravitational force acting on this object into its components. We would have then been able to calculate the net force acting on this object. Using that we would have been able to find the acceleration of the object and then use an equation of motion to determine the final velocity. But what we can now say is we can say that since this object has a force of gravity which is a conservative force acting on this object and a non-conservative force of friction acting on the object, we know that only the non-conservative force is going to have an effect on the mechanical energy of this object. So we can start out with this formula that is given to us that tells us the change in mechanical energy is equal to the work done by the non-conservative force, which we can rewrite as the final kinetic energy plus the final potential energy minus the initial kinetic and potential energies must be equal to the work done by friction, since that is the only non-conservative force. We can then substitute in the formulae for each of these and then substitute in the values that we have been given. So we've been told that this object has a mass of two kilograms the final velocity is our unknown that we are trying to find. We know that when this object reaches the final point, we know that the height then is going to be zero, and so that makes that final potential energy zero. We were also told that this object was released from rest, meaning that the initial velocity is zero, which means that the initial kinetic energy is also zero, and then we can calculate the initial potential energy by taking the product of the mass Earth's gravitational acceleration and that object's initial vertical height because that is what results in a gravitational potential energy. We know that this is going to be equal to the amount of energy that is lost due to friction. We were told that the frictional force is 5 newtons, the displacement of the object is 10 meters, and friction and displacement are always opposite to each other. And what that allows us to do then is it allows us to solve for our unknown final velocity to see that it is 2.97 meters per second and this is because a certain amount of energy has been lost and that energy is lost to friction so what we are saying here is we're saying that the amount of energy that's lost is equal to the amount of work that was done by a non-conservative force on the system it is also important to see that this formula can also be applied to systems that do not have non-conservative forces present because if there is no non-conservative force present that would mean that there is no work done by a non-conservative force and we know that a change in mechanical energy essentially means the final mechanical energy minus the initial mechanical energy which can then be rewritten as the initial mechanical energy is equal to the final mechanical energy. It must just be noted here that this formula is not given in the exam and may not be used except when it has been derived from here. So this is the given formula. We can then say since there is no non-conservative force in an example where you have been told that, since there is no non-conservative force, we can then say that final mechanical energy minus the initial is equal to zero and therefore the initial mechanical must be equal to the final mechanical energy in a system where there is no non-conservative force.